All right, guys, so you should have just finished your formative in Eduelastic. If you have not completed your formative, you need to exit out of this video right now and go back to Canvas um, to get your password and then go to Eduelastic and take that formative for me on today, yesterday's lesson. Okay, and then, so if you're starting this video, that means you've completed your formative and you're ready to fill out your notes page for today. So, lesson today is on scale drawings and mo models. So, this is kind of like when architects are building a house, they have to make a blueprint of that house. So, it's a drawing, but it has to be proportional to what the real house is going to look like. You can't just make random measurements in your drawing, you've got to scale them down so that you can see how much space everything's going to take up in the actual house. So scale drawing or model is used to represent an object that's too big or too small to be shown in its actual size. So that the measurements or the dimensions are going to be proportional to the dimensions of the actual object. So a scale is like the ratio of measurement that they're using. So it's the ratio of the model to its actual size. And we always put model over actual. You can have the same units or you can have different units. So it can be a ratio or it can be a rate. Um, and then to find a missing measurement, you can use that scale as your known ratio and then just set up your unknown ratio and solve your proportion. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Okay, so on number one, it says the scale on a drawing for a new pool is two inches equals seven feet. So I know I'm going to be using that scale as my first ratio, my known ratio. If the length of the pool in the drawing is 10 inches, what is the actual length? Okay, so it says the drawing length is 10 inches. So we need to put inches with inches, so we're going to match up 10 inches in the top of my other ratio, and then we want to find the actual length, so that's going to line up with our 7 feet. Okay, so then to solve, we're just going to solve that proportion like we did all day yesterday. So we're going to cross multiply, 2 times x is 2x, 10 times 7 is 70, and then divide by 2, so x would be 35, and then you can just look at what you had lined up to know which unit you need at the end. So we were missing our feet, so x would be 35 feet. Okay, number two says the blueprint for a house uses the scale 1.5 inches to 2 feet. So we've got that as our known ratio. The living room is 18 feet long. Find its length on the blueprint. Okay, so it says the living room is 18 feet long. So that's the actual living room. So that 18 feet, think about whether it would need to go in the top or bottom of my second ratio. If you said bottom, you are correct. So 18 feet would go in the bottom. We do not know how long it would be on the blueprint. So that's our X. And then we're going to cross multiply. I always like to start with my variable. So... 2 times x is 2x, and then I need to multiply 1.5 times 18. So 1.5 times 18 gives me 27. So I have 2x equals 27, divide by 2, so x equals 13.5 inches, or 13 and a half inches. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do 3 and 4 with y'all on the video, and then I'll probably turn you loose some after that. So a model of a car uses a scale of two and one fourth inches equals three feet. So to make that a little bit easier to work with, I'm going to change that one fourth of an inch into the decimal equivalent. So instead of two and one fourth, I'm going to write 2.25 over three. Okay, the model is 14 inches, so model always goes on top. So that 14 is going to go on top. We don't know the actual length of the car, so that is our X. Cross multiply, so 2.25 times x and 14 times 3, let's see, 3 times 14 would give me 42. So I have 2.25x equals 42, divide by 2.25. And when I divide 42 by 2.25, that should give me 18.6 repeating feet. We don't really like to have a repeating decimal in our final answer. So remember, back from unit 1, if I have 0.6 repeating, that's the same thing as 6 over 9. 
which simplifies to two thirds. So that would be 18 and two thirds feet. Okay, and then number four, the scale on the map reads two inches equals 125 miles. So two over 125 would be our known ratio. Two cities are four and three fourths inches apart on the map. So since that's our inches on the map, it's gonna go in the top of our second ratio. And I'm gonna change that four and three fourths to 4.75. We don't know their actual distance, so that would be our X. Cross multiply, two times X equals 125 times 4.75. Divide by, or wait, hold on, 125 times 4.75 should give me 593.75. And then we're going to divide by 2. So when I divide by 2, X should equal 296.875 miles. Which if we change that back to a fraction, it would be 296 and 7 eighths of a mile. Okay, so basically it's always, you put your scale as your known ratio, and then when you're setting up your unknown, you wanna put model over actual. So your model measurement will go in the top if you have it. Actual measurement will go on the bottom if you have it. Okay, so why don't y'all pause your video, try number five through eight, and then press play when you are ready to check those four. All right, so five says the wingspan of an airplane is 197 feet. A model of this airplane uses a scale of five inches equals 40 feet. So that would be my known ratio. It says the wingspan of the airplane. So that's the actual airplane is 197 feet. So it needs to go on the bottom. And our X would go on top because we're looking for the model wingspan. Cross multiply, 40X equals five times 197. When we multiply 5 times 197, we should get 985. And then divide by 40. So x should equal 24.625 inches, which would be 24 and 5 eighths inches. For number 6, the model or scale they gave us was 3 inches equals 20 feet. So that's my known ratio. And then it says the model is 5 feet tall. But be careful. When it gave you the measurement of your model, the measurement for that was in inches. So you always have to be consistent going across in your ratio. If this top measurement is in inches in your first ratio, it needs to be inches in your second ratio also. So we're going to have to convert that 5 feet into inches. So 5 times 12 would give us 60 inches. So that's going to go in the top of my second ratio. We don't know how tall the actual building is, so that would be X. So just make sure if they give you your model length in one measurement, then your model length needs to be in that measurement for your second ratio also. Okay, cross multiply, 3X equals 20 times 60. 20 times 60 would give me 1,200. Divide by three, so X should equal 400 feet. Okay, number seven, an artist painted a six foot tall painting, then decided to create a smaller version. So her scale is four inches equals 1.5 feet. So four over 1.5. What will be the height of the smaller painting? Okay, so the actual painting is six feet, which is fine because they gave us feet in our um, scale as well. So I'm gonna put six feet on the bottom. We don't know the height of the smaller painting. So that's our X. Cross multiply, 1.5 times x equals 4 times 6. Please release your cross-country student to the cafeteria. All cross-country students report to the cafeteria at this time. Okay, so 1.5x equals 24. Divide by 1.5. So x should equal 16 inches on that one. Okay, number 8. Map of Texas uses a scale, one and a half inches equals 40 miles. So I'm going to change that one and a half to 1.5 over 40. Houston and Dallas are eight and seven sixteenths inches apart on the map. So I'm going to change that eight and seven sixteenths to a decimal as well. 
7 divided by 16 gives me 0.4375. So that would be 8.4375 inches. I don't know the actual distance between them, so that's my x. Then I'm going to cross multiply. So 1.5 times x equals 40 times 8.4375. And when I type in 40 times 8.4375 into my calculator, I get 337.5. Then I'm going to divide by 1.5. So x equals 225 miles. But we have to be careful. That's the distance between Houston and Dallas, but it wants the round trip distance between them. When you make a round trip, that means you're going there and back. So we're going to go 225 miles from Houston to Dallas. And then we have to turn around and go 225 miles from Dallas to Houston. So altogether, that would be 450 miles. We have to double it. Okay. Go ahead and pause your video again. Try number 9 and number 10. And then press play when you're ready to check those two. Okay, so number nine says a tiny statue of Tom Brady is two and eight fifteenths inches tall. Statue uses a scale of one inch to 2.5 feet. Okay, so one over 2.5. And then the statue is two and eight fifteenths inches tall. I'm going to change that to a decimal. So that would be 2.53 repeating. Okay, so since we have a repeating decimal, we're going to round in this case. So we're just going to say 2.53. And then we don't know his actual height, so that's going to be our x. Okay, so cross multiply. 1 times x equals x. 2.5 times 2.53 is approximately 6.3 repeating, which is 6 feet 4 inches. All right, the crack on the Liberty Bell is approximately 24.5 inches long. If a model of the Liberty Bell uses a scale of 3 inches equals 5 feet, so 3 over 5, except, hold on, what is the length of the crack on the model? So it says the crack on the actual Liberty Bell is 24.5 inches. So since it's giving us that length of the actual bell in inches, that means we need to change this length of the actual bell in the scale to inches as well. So that 5 feet, we're going to do 5 times 12 again and change it to 60 inches. So for my scale in the beginning, instead of having 3 over 5, I'm going to have 3 over 60. And then we don't know how long it would be on the model, so that's our x. On the actual bell, it's 24.5 inches. Cross multiply, 60 times x is 60x, time equals 3 times 24.5. 3 times 24.5 gives me 73.5, and then divide by 60, so x should equal 1.225 inches. Alright, if you're finding the scale, it's actually going to be really easy. We said scale is model over actual. So... We're first just going to write the ratio of the model length to the actual length. And then we want to show how much each of those model lengths represent. So we want it to look like this. 1 inch equals 2.5 feet. We want to show what each inch represents. So we're basically going to divide both quantities by the numerator. Okay, so... For 11, if we have that the drawing length is 9 inches and the actual length is 45, the ratio of my drawing to the actual is 9 over 45, and we're going to divide them both by 9 because we want that numerator to be 1. So 9 divided by 9 is 1, 45 divided by 9 is 5. So we would say that 1 inch represents 5 feet. For number 12, we have 6 and 2 fifths meters represents 120 kilometers. So I'm going to change that 6 and 2 fifths to 6.4 over 120. And then we have to divide both parts of that by 6.4. Because 
because we want to show how much each meter represents. So 6.4 divided by itself is 1. 120 divided by 6.4 is 18.75. So 1 meter represents 18.75 kilometers. Okay, two cities are 750 miles apart. If they are 8 inches apart on the map, find the scale. So remember, you want to put model over actual. So this 8 inches on the map needs to go over the 750 miles. And then divide both parts by 8. So 750 divided by 8 would give us 93.75. So one inch represents 93.75 miles. All right, pause your video, work number 14, and then you can press play to check it and you'll be done. So on number 14, the cell phone tower is 162 feet tall. The model is five and five eighths. So we're gonna put five and five eighths, which five divided by eight is 0.625. So we have 5.625 inches over 162 feet. Divide them both by 5.625, so that would give us 1 over 28.8. So 1 inch represents 28.8 feet. And that is it. Um, guys, I don't have zero block tomorrow, even though I'll be here tomorrow. So I will give you all a chance to ask questions at the beginning of class if you were confused about anything in the video, or you can email me. Um, but I will see you all tomorrow.